YouTubers, this is Larry Joe with my new guitar. I haven't made a video in about a month. I just made the one for the Solar, you'll see that first, but this is a BC Rich Warlock. It's called a Special Edition. I think it's mahogany neck. It definitely is ebony. It doesn't look anything like a rosewood. Um, it's got uh, two volumes, in fact, one for the neck and one for the bridge, and you got um, one master tone right here. Um, two BC Rich pickups. They're pretty good out pick, output. I haven't changed them yet to EMGs. I bought the EMGs, but I haven't had a chance to change it, and um, I think these sound pretty good. Um, definitely one of the um, one of the better ones that are stock pickups that I played through. The interesting part is this. As you see, it, it's got the Widow headstock, and that's in the um, in this. And I saw it online at Guitar Center. I'm not paid by Guitar Center again, like I said in the last one. Guitar Center, nobody pays me for any of this. These are my guitars. I see them. I think they're cool. I buy them if I have the money. Anyways, I saw this online. And, um, and I thought to myself, you know what? I review so many interesting guitars, you know, the V's, Explorers, all that stuff, everything. Um, why don't I have a Warlock? I remember these from the 80s and I really liked them. And early 90s, I remember these started coming out with, with these on the back. And I'm like, you know what? And in fact, um, my other BC Rich I have is the V. And I did a review on that, and the one guy said, hey man, I was really looking for one of those, or the Warlock version. And I thought to myself, Warlock's a cool guitar that I remember, like I said, from the, um, the 80s that I really liked, but I couldn't afford it then. Uh, I was in high school. Anyway, so I'm like, maybe I can find a decent one. And I didn't want some of the bolt-on ones, you know, that have the bolts in the back. Um, from what I've heard and what I've searched, are not so great. Not that I'm against bolt-on guitars, I'm not. I have an Ibanez, it's a bolt-on, and it's pretty good. Uh, anyways, but I was like looking for something that was neck through, and I saw this, and I thought, that looks neck through to me. However, I was wrong in that assumption. If you can see, put it in the light, my finger goes into it, see that? There's like a channel that goes the outside of it. So this is a special edition. You got the Warlock or the Widow Headstock logo right there. I guess that's uh, what, that's seven fret. You got the headstock itself with the standard BC Rich tuners. And you got it here, so it's like three three widows, which is interesting. Anyways, when these came out, um, I remember seeing them, and then I bought this because I thought it was a neck through. It's not a neck through. This is not a neck through, and those channels in it just means that it's not a neck through. And I got some pictures. I got some pictures that you guys can check out right here. I can get this thing. There we go. As you can see, there are bolts and a plate. Two bolts and a plate here, two bolts and a plate here that attach to it. It's called the invisible. I guess because they put it like that, they feel like calling it invisible. I don't know, I guess. Uh, obviously, it's a string through. There's no Floyd Rose. I really wanted a Floyd Rose, but um, it seems like you can't find too many of these, um, the Warlocks, and I never saw any more of these. But I guess, I guess with doing the research, they made a Warlock like this, they made it made a V like the V I have, except for it's got that invisible thing that with the widow headstock, and they made a um, uh, I think it was 
I think they made a Mockingbird and a Bitch. That's the other style of, of guitar. And with this Invisible, so they did a whole line of them back then. So I, I think, I don't know, the and serial number looks wonky. It could be seven, it says seven three. It could be 2007, I don't know. Anyways, um, but I think it's a good guitar. I was thinking about returning it. Originally, when I saw this, um, uh, Guitar Center was running a deal of 20% off used guitars, which they never do. Whenever they do a, any kind of 10 or 15%, or they send you an email, hey, you wanna buy something, it's 10, 15% off, you know. Um, it never applies to used guitars, so it did apply for about a week. Uh, I think that was the Memorial Day sale. Anyways, um, so I thought to myself, let's grab it and I'll move the money around and then I'll buy it. Gone. As soon as I clicked on it, it was gone. Said it's said it's um, out of stock or whatever it is. And I'm like, shoot, man. And then about a week later, I was, I was trying to find a decent one going clicking clicking refreshing and every day like four or five times i would i would um four or five times i would click on it and still nothing and then this one popped back up and i was like why did it come back you know i mean i hate to be like a naysayer or whatever but why did it come back and before it said great condition now it says poor condition and i'm like I look in front of pictures. I couldn't see anything, so I gave them a call. Uh, it was originally uh, four ninety nine is what they wanted for this, and I'm like, that, that's fine. You know, it's it's not easy to find these, and especially with that in the back, the invisible. So I called them and I said, hey, um, this was out there before it sold. Now it's back. Can you tell me what happened? And the guy's like, oh yeah, yeah, uh, we had it marked as great condition but it's not great condition. And I'm like, oh really, what's it got on? And he sent me pictures of it. There's some dings right here. There's some dings right there and there's a massive ding. I guess it was on it and the guy wanted to return it because of it. You see it's a big piece of paint missing there. And there's like pick scratches. You can see the pick scratches right there. There. They're pretty dominant. You can see these little divots and stuff. And there's other stuff going on the same way. So um, he's like, I tell you what, if you're really interested in this, before it goes, before it goes out of stock, before someone else grabs it, let me drop the price. Let me talk to my manager. If the manager agrees, we'll drop the price to um, $420. How does that work? And I said, sold. That sounds good. <laughs> So he called me back and said, okay, if you're still interested, let's get it done. I was like, sounds good to me. I had um, the 500 to drop on it anyways. I was trying to find used ones and the best deal, but with that in the back, I thought it was, it'd was it be a good deal. So there you go. You can call Guitar Center and ask them. And whenever I see a guitar I like, um, I call them and say, hey, what's, what's the condition? I mean, it says this, says good, but what does that mean? Is there any marks? How does it play? Whatever. And they're usually they're pretty honest. They might not call you back or you might have to keep calling and sort of bugging them to get them to do it. But there's a chance they'll drop the price. They dropped the price on the, um, that Solar um, Explorer style. They dropped the price on this. It never hurts to ask for a price. There was another guitar I was looking at, an Ibanez. And I called them and said, hey, it's this price, but it's a little not the same. It wasn't factory. So the guy's like, wow, it has to be here for a while. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, that's not the case, but he didn't want to drop it. And like two hours later, it wasn't even available. So definitely someone wanted it. But like I said, you can always see what they say. It never hurts to ask, you know? Anyways, um, it's a great guitar. The pickup sounded good through my, um, through my pedal in the house. They don't sound as good. That's the reason why I didn't change them, but it, I probably am going to change these now because I don't, I don't exactly like the sound, um, but they sound better than some of the other stock pickups. My plan is this. It's got a, um, it's got a master tone, 
in two volumes, right? One for each pickup, right? One for each pickup. My plan is this. I'll put EMG 81, and I already have them, and the EMG 85, and I'll put a master volume. I'll put a kill switch here, which I already, I just bought, and then the tone here. I don't really give a crap about tone. I really don't adjust the settings too much. A lot of metal guys don't, you know, but if you're playing some different um, jazz or um, country stuff, you need to adjust the volume and then different things. But for metal, we don't give a crap. So, like I said, master volume, or only volume right there, a kill switch, which will fit perfectly under here, and a, vol and a tone knob. And then, like I said, I already have those, so that's the plan. And then what I always do, I always put the battery, I always find a way, especially this, this is pretty big, I always find a spot for the battery to go in there. Usually I wrap it, wrap it with um, styrofoam or something that'll keep it from moving around in there. Anyways, um, I think this is a good guitar. I thought about it when I got it, when I saw the dent and stuff, I was like, you know, maybe I should return it. But... Because I got it out of the box and I'm like, it feels beat up. It felt a little bit beat up and I didn't like the way it played. So I adjusted the neck and I lowered the string action and I like the way it plays now. I, it plays pretty good and I thought to myself, no, nah, I'll just put EMGs, which I haven't, like I said, because the BC Riches sound pretty good. So I'm not going to argue, but after playing through this amp out here like this, I don't like the sound compared to the EMGs, so I definitely am going to change this probably within the next couple days. But yeah, it, it sounds good. Let me run through it. Let me run through it, let you hear it. I got my little spark, positive grip spark go. That's a cool little lamp, man. Anyways, if you didn't see it in my last video, if you didn't see it, look at that. There's my cell phone, my alternate cell phone. The cell phone is longer than the amp, and the amp's like three times as thick. But this thing is tiny, and I was playing through it, and it's not, it's turned down a little bit. Since it's so small, I had my um, Lakato $50 wireless system here that I got from Amazon. Got the receiver and transmitter, and you know, I can send the signal. And, but if you go about 40 feet, it's not so good. But 50 bucks, Amazon. Two days shipping or whatever, that's a good deal. Anyways, I have my Inve mount scene setting here on my uh, phone for the uh, Spark Go, and that's a great setting. Sounds amazing. Sustain for days. See? It's not even EMG, but I got that pick squeal like nothing. Not bad. Master volume for the um, the bridge pickup, and then you kick it to the neck. Let's see. 
that's the volume for the neck down there. We're going to get rid of that, get rid of that, and throw in a kill switch. You know, you tap it and it goes out. Anyways. pretty good I mean for me wanting to change it out man it sounds pretty good <laughs> it sounds really good actually but I'm going to stick EMGs it's just just the way it's going to be and then I'll put the kill switch right there anyways um this is the BC Rich Warlock deluxe uh, or spe not deluxe special edition with the widow headstock everything and the invisible so i don't know if there's any good videos out there a lot of these guitars that came out like over 10 years ago there's very few reviews because people people were buying different guitars but i like this i like this style and i'm like kicking myself because i really really should have got one of the um one of the really deluxe ones just like the just like the V, the BC Rich V that I have, that is a really great guitar, and it feels flawless, perfect. This doesn't feel flawless, but it feels pretty good, so I'm going to keep it, and it's mine. It'll go into my personal collection, but I'm going to keep an eye out for any more BC Rich cool guitars um, that I can add to this. Anyways, um, I want to thank you for watching this video. Someday these will get to more people that want to view these, but until then, I might be the only one that's that's doing this one with the invisible, because um, not too many people do them. Anyways, um, if you want to subscribe, that'd be cool. It would help with getting this video or any of my other videos out there, um, but it's up to you. I, I'm okay with what I have. I'm not going to beg you for it, but I beg for your comment, please, please. Leave a comment, say, hey man, that guitar looks cool, or hey man, that guitar doesn't look that cool, you know, or hey man, I hate the way you're playing. Uh, that's not very nice, but at least it's criticism, you know, and um, at least something. Um, I want to address this before anyone else does. I have a beard, okay? My beard's about that long. Okay, that long, and I have a tie on it, but this beard is not based off any person. This is because I was in the military for 24 years, and I couldn't even have a beard. Couldn't even have a good um, mustache, you know, so you have to cut it and trim it along the lip, so, and along the side, so it, it never was really that good of a mustache. Anyway, so I told myself, after I retire, I'm going to grow a beard. I don't give a crap. I'm going to grow a beard, especially because I don't have much on top. You know, i got to try to make up where it'll grow. So, this is not based on anyone. And the fact that I'm bald and I, I keep the sides trimmed and, you know, cut the top when it grows a little bit, little wisps. Anyways, um, so I'm not trying to model myself after anyone because... I'm me and um, I don't think I look so much like other people, but it has been said several times that in the comments and if you feel that same way, that's cool. Um, I don't mind being compared to a guitar genius. So before I, I mean, well, now I'll say it. Everybody's been saying, they always say I look like Kerry King. There's several different variations between me and him. First, He's a great guitarist, and his it, the metal and the rhythm that he plays is amazing. It, I, I I could never I could never even come a tiny bit close to as amazing as as he is, and he's a great songwriter. His lead's not amazing, but it's really good. And and um, with him and Jeff Hanneman before and um, and now uh, I forget the guy's name. 
he's a great guitarist I just don't remember his name anyways um, he's a great guitarist Kerry King's a great guitarist that's the different I'm not a great guitarist you're not gonna say I'm a great guitarist that's okay I'm a decent guitarist um, I try to have a somewhat positive attitude I may not smile as much as some people that are kind of bubbly and that's cool um, but it doesn't mean I'm not happy in my heart and and happy to be making these videos I am even if my back's hurt and sitting on this metal chair you know um, I'm still I try to keep a positive outlook without that like I could never I could never go through what I went through in the military and going everywhere um, I have no tons of tattoos or the muscles that he has I have one guitar or one tattoo it's a guitar with wings a flying bee with wings that I got a long time ago and then um, I guess it's almost 10 years now I got it redone right before I retired from the military um, and like I said I'm not bulky like Kerry King and I try to be somewhat positive I'm sure he's positive I've seen him try to be positive but and being able to play brutal metal the way he does and the way Slayer always did you have to lose some of that <laughs> To be able to get through and get your point across and he writes a lot of songs and the lyrics and I'm like holy cow you gotta have a you gotta have a certain mindset to be nice to be able to make those songs anyways that's that's the big difference between between us um, but you might make the comment it's cool it's cool it's it's great to be compared to someone that's that's great um, my playing style is different. Mine's more based off of um, the people that I used to listen to, like Joe Satriani and, and stuff. I don't touch anything he can do, and I've never felt or put it across that I could play like that. Um, but I think a lot of how I do the legatos and stuff and the pull-offs are similar because I learned from watching the videos and listening to what he did. Anyways, um, if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. If you don't and you put a thumbs down, please leave a comment saying I don't like this or why. Try to be, give me some criticism and some feedback, not just the negative. Um, if you want to subscribe, that'd be great. I'd like to get this out to more people, but if you don't, that's cool too. Just leave me a comment. I'd really appreciate that. And, um, and I'll play it out. Just, I think this is going long enough just for one guitar. So, um, anyways, thanks for coming. Have a good night or good day or whatever. And I'll play it out. Take care. Okay.